Have you ever been playing one of your favorite video games and suddenly thought to yourself, I wonder how I can turn my favorite game of all time into something I want absolutely nothing to do with? Well, 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 have I got the solution for you. Introducing playing your favorite games but without taking a single point of damage. The title is still a work in progress. Think of a game. Any game. Any game that you absolutely love. Any game that you think you could possibly easily be completely damageless. Like a Mario game, or Zelda, or Metroid, or... I, I don't know any other games. The rules are simple. Any point of damage you receive is an immediate restart, and saving is completely forbidden. You have to beat the entire game in one single run. So of course, I decided to take this little idea of mine and apply it to Luigi's Mansion, a game that I have loved since my childhood. Yeah, this is a horrible idea. I booted up the game without realizing what I was about to jump into. I honestly expected to finish this challenge within a few days, and I felt like it would only take me roughly 15 tries to do so. Unfortunately, I was horribly wrong, and instead it took me a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> Hell, eventually I got so frustrated I changed the rules entirely, uh, but we'll get to that later. As for now, the beginning of this challenge was instead the most tormenting and ruthless experience I've ever had to endure. If you don't know anything about Luigi's Mansion, don't worry, I got your back. Basically, the game is split into two different modes, the normal mansion and the more sinister hidden mansion, which you unlock after beating the game for the first time. The two mansions are exactly similar layout-wise, but in the hidden mansion, getting hit causes you to lose more health than you would in the regular mansion. To compensate for this, they give you a generous boost to your poltergust, which allows you to capture ghosts two times faster. So for a damageless challenge, this makes running it down in the regular mansion a million times more difficult. So naturally, that's exactly what I did. The first few runs of this did not go very smooth at all. I did manage to get to the first boss of the game, Chauncey, on multiple occasions, but those fell apart pretty quickly. Like, I, I just, I just don't know. And of course, after my third failed attempt, I caved and swapped over to All Reliable to make the challenge slightly easier. Or at least I thought it would make things easier. It, it, it didn't. It was at this point I finally added a counter of my failed attempts to show everyone watching that I absolutely sucked at the game, and then prove to everyone watching that I absolutely sucked at the game. And this continued on for quite some time, completely embarrassing myself by losing the run in mere minutes after starting it. Time and time again, it was like I was somehow doing worse after every restart. And the worst part was, this was simply just the beginning of the game. I was somehow managing to continuously fail in the easiest part of the entire game. Now the game itself is split into four different areas. The first area being these first six rooms on the second floor, and after you beat that bouncing baby boy Chauncey, you unlock area two, which is almost the entire first floor. Area three is most of the second floor, with a few rooms from floor one scattered in, and the final area, numero quatro, is the third floor, roof, and the cold and sad basement, and of course, each area gets progressively more difficult as you go along, so the fact that I was somehow managing to horribly screw up here in the first area was not a good sign at all, and it wasn't until attempt number 12, where I finally managed to do something right, until I didn't. Is it how is Neville and Lydia- Oh, because I didn't grab their pearls, that's right. Ah! Accidentally saving was not the most ideal outcome for me, as it meant if I took damage, I would have to play through the entire game off-stream just to get back to the beginning to do the challenge over again. Oh, yeah, did I mention I live-streamed all this at twitch.tv slash bobzilla64? No? Oh. Well? I'm actually not sure how to finish this bit. Making it to Area 2 was the first big step in meeting this entire challenge, and unsurprisingly, it didn't last long. Why? Two words, invisible pieces of shit. Oh, wait, that's four words, whatever you get what I mean. Right before that though, I managed to get to a major plot point in the game. After taking out the storage room and revealing the entire second half of the room, I got to unleash the boos, the little goofballs that posed quite a challenge for me. That challenge being that I had to go back to look through every single room I had already been in to find and capture those rapscallions. And of course, every room I complete after that also happens to have a hidden bugger in it. This isn't necessarily too difficult, but unfortunately the boos tend to be a bit, uh unpredictable. And of course, as the areas progress, so do their health pools. And what's even worse is that I can't even skip them. To complete the game, I have to capture 40 out of the 50 total boos in the mansion. And although that seems like a lot, there are actually a total of 24 rooms in the first three areas that have a boo. And the final boss of Area 3 happens to give you an extra 15 boos to your count. I'll explain him a little more when we get to him. So once you get to Area 4, all you really need is one extra boo, right? 24 plus 15 equals 39, which means you only need one more to hit 40. Well, technically yes, if you do every room available to you in the first three areas. As there just so happens to be one specific room called the Hidden room in area two. And every time you enter this room, I gave the bats here, I'm gonna... 
every time. Every single time. Is there a way to not get hit with the bats? Yeah, if anyone knows how to not take damage when entering the room, please tell me immediately. This is just not fair at all. It also just so happens that most of the rooms in the mansion are in fact optional, as they don't actually give you keys to other rooms. You can just walk right through them without a care in the world. But if you don't want to deal with 300 health boos running around the various rooms for five straight minutes, then yeah, it turns out that these rooms aren't optional at all, and in fact, you have to do them just to grab a small health boo. And you better bet your ass I did not want to deal with those 300 health bozos. After managing to completely ruin everything by saving, and then of course taking damage, I eventually came back to the game after a small break of an entire week with a newfound confidence. I had managed to make it to Area 2 once, I could do it again. And surprisingly enough, that statement was actually true. What, getting through Area 2? Yeah, no, that wasn't happening anytime soon. Hell, for the next 40 whole attempts, I managed to struggle horribly with both areas. I even had a plan to deal with the simple, easy-to-beat ghosts of the game, which, to be fair, was simply burning them alive, because you could do that in this game. But even that ended up backfiring on me. Wait, what? It wasn't until attempt 39 where I finally managed to make a major dent in this challenge. I had gotten to the second area boss, Bogmire. I played as safe and as conservatively as I possibly could, and after a few minutes, yeah, no, I, I didn't even get close to beating him. And after one last embarrassing run in the strat, I had finally decided enough was enough. It was time to change up how I played this silly little challenge. I had a lot more I wanted to do with my time, instead of just wasting it away playing this game. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was a lot of fun. But playing it for a few hours a day to get little to no progress on it started to really weigh down on me. A lot. I had decided that I was finally going to start saving the game. After beating the final boss of each area, I was going to save my game to make my life a lot easier. Well, that is until I took damage five different times in the first couple of rooms. I was on my 40th attempt. I, I don't want to talk about it. But after another week-long break, I loaded the game back up, and this time, I truly was ready. Ready to kick some ghost ass and beat this entire challenge once and for all. The first area went so smooth, I forgot I even struggled with it during previous runs. I was speed running through rooms like a madman. I fast tracked it through the parlor, anteroom, and closet with more ease than I had ever shown this entire run. I took down Neville after accidentally letting a ghost loose, whoops, and not even the narcissistic and heartless Lydia could stop me. Before I knew it, I had curb stomped the toddler and victory was mine. And for the first time in 40 plus runs, I got to save the game, and I felt great. This challenge actually seemed winnable. Easy, almost. Like it was right there, right beyond my grasp, ready to be taken. And boy, I sure did take it. Area 2 was almost as easy as Area 1, and I started off strong. I practiced my meta strats on the grabber ghosts in the bathroom before getting blood on the dance floor. And even though I struggled in the storage room, I still prevailed. And the booze were set free once again. Only this time, it was for good. I decided that this was it. I was going to beat this challenge today, once and for all. So I changed the rules even more, and now every single time I caught a boo, I saved the game. I didn't care anymore. Every single boo I caught, I saved directly afterwards, which, in the end, saved my ass multiple times. I ended up getting all the way to the mirror room before I finally took damage for the first time this entire run. And then I did it again. But I was still able to fight back against the invisible little rascals, and I was back on track before I- oh. Uh, never mind. But no mere mouse was going to stop my crusade, and I proved worthy of the blade after taking out the next several rooms. Shivers the butler shivered at my presence. I collected my own brother's hat after burning ghosts alive. I put Melody out of tune, gave Mr. Lugs a weight loss program. I took out flying pots of pans while avoiding my own demise. And my reward for all my struggles? The ability to take out fire hazards. But I didn't care. I was on a roll. Not even Mr. Bones and his guard dog Spooky could take me down. Until another Mr. Bones did actually take me down. But I came back in full swing, taking down all three of them within mere seconds. And finally, it was time. Time to show Bogmire that I wasn't weak and afraid. I was strong. I was ready. And damn it, I proved I was ready. I don't know how I did it, but I somehow almost took him down in one whole cycle. And after a few... <clears throat> lapses in my depth perception, I locked on to that grimace wannabe and showed him on my first attempt who truly was the boss. I had done it. After almost 50 attempts, I had finally managed to pass my best run. And this time, things were different. As in, I was cheesing the entire run at every chance I got, but uh, just ignore that part. I had no time to lose, so I quickly jumped into Area 3. After experiencing a worse frame drop than playing Minecraft on the Switch, I found Mario's letter, another one of his lost items, and took it with me to the ultimate showdown, a helpless plumber with a vacuum versus the Giga Chat of the mansion, Biff Atlas. And even though he almost beat me down, I happened to have the better steroids. Hell, the boo in his room showed me more trouble than he ever could. I had tailed it upstairs and gained the ability to wield pure ice, and using this newfound ability, I froze Peppa Pig's aunt right in her tracks. And 
afterwards, I took down a senile granny with her own balls of yarn. And just as I thought I was unstoppable, I found out I was the exact opposite of it. Or was I? I went back in and immediately burned several ghosts to their graves, pissed directly on the moon, and acquired a power star. I took down my least favorite ghost in the entire game, Slim Bankshot. And although I ended up increasing the hit counter in the process, before I knew it, Slim Jim had been defeated. But surprisingly enough, that wasn't the hard part. The true challenge awaited in the room next to his, the projector room. I had told myself I would make sure to bring an elemental power when dealing with this room. But unfortunately, I had forgotten about it. And when I realized, it was too late. And I was in for one hell of a stressful ride. Oh, I'm dead here. I'm dead. No way I live here. How am I alive? How the hell? I don't know how I didn't take any damage there. I 100% should have, but I did, and it was a sign. A sign that this was it. I could beat this whole challenge even if I was cheesing it. It was possible. It was doable. So I grabbed Mario's glove and headed back up to the first area where I met Henry Ford and Orville Wright, the Cryobaby twins who got mad I abused game again. I took them out easily and found the final lost item, Mario's shoe. All five of these items were important, as I had to bring them all back to the fortune teller of Witch.com, Madame Clairvoyant. She would then yap for several minutes while I spammed the A button as fast as I could, and by the time I had developed Carpal Tunnel, she had checked all of Mario's items and was ready for her flight, which I promptly helped her board even if she didn't really want to. I went back upstairs and, unfortunately, had to restart and go back up a second time before catching the final boo of Area 3 and moving on to what I knew was the reason I wanted to cheese this entire challenge. The final boss of Area 3 is a giant boo by the name Bulosis. It's basically just a bunch of bews fusing together Dragon Ball style into a great giant ball of death. You beat Bulosis by luring him over to one of the two unicorn statues on either side of the battlefield, and you suck him up and get him to pop on the unicorn's horn. Then, you grab an ice elemental ghost and blast those suckers to the coldest bits of hell to suck them up. The problem is, he performs, and once you pop him a second time and onward, the small little brats begin to taunt you. They launch themselves at you, fly close to you, and knock into you just so barely, but it still does damage nonetheless. Early in the video, I said boos were unpredictable, and this is basically what I meant. Bulosis is easily the hardest boss in this entire game, even harder than the king of all boos himself. So being able to save right before fighting him probably saved my sanity, as time and time again I went for the throne and was brutally knocked down and murdered by white balls of cream puff. Although, surprisingly enough, I actually managed to beat the oversized bouncy ball after losing only three times. I'm not sure how I managed it, but I was certainly proud. The run ender had became the run ended. That made a lot more sense in my head, I'm gonna be honest. Oh, also, I do want to mention I may or may not have forgotten to add another hit to my counter after the 50 second attempt. Uh, this happened on multiple occasions throughout the entire run. The counter is definitely less than it should be. <laughs> Anyways, in my eyes, Area 4 was gonna be the easiest of the bunch. And I'm not sure why I thought this, because uh, I happened to be horribly wrong in every way possible. I took damage almost immediately at the beginning of Area 4, as lightning strikes the mansion, and it loses all power and has a big old blackout. This causes ghosts to show up in every room, even if it was previously lit up. Unfortunately, I am stupid and an idiot but eventually I got through two wards of the annoying orange and got to meet Uncle Grimly who honestly I don't even have any insults for he's uh, pretty chill I got into the basement and turned the power back on and all was well in the world Thank goodness. I quickly cleared out another room and afterwards realized that I was in a bit of a pickle. As it just so happened, I wasn't going to have to fight a boo for quite some time and although I said I would only save after catching boos and completing areas yeah, I lied, lol. After cheesing the game for the one millionth time, I headed upstairs once again to face my fears. Only this time, it was against the Three Stooges of TikTok Clock, which unfortunately ended in tragedy. But I marched back up there and flawlessly took out all three of them with more grace than a toy soldier. 
see what I did there. I then spent way too long fighting the Shy Guy ghosts on the roof, as I couldn't seem to find the elemental ghost to burn them alive, but afterwards, I took no chances and teleported back down to the front, where I saved Toad once again. But funny enough, the room I used to teleport was the room I had to be in, so I ran all the way back upstairs to face off against the Knights of the Round Table. Luckily for me, I cleared the room and was able to capture my first boo of Area 4. The reason for this was because instead of having 300 health and running around to a million different rooms, this little guy had a reasonable 150 and constantly went between two different rooms. And even though he moved around between these two rooms, he still couldn't face the wrath of the plumber. The next two rooms were basically light work for me, if you can't take in damage light work that is. Oh, and did I mention it happened twice? Yeah, this may or may not have been me getting my frustrations out, but the room afterwards was like a walk in the park if we were frozen over an ice. I took out the resident snowman before heading back upstairs to fight one final room before the final fight of the game. Funny enough, this room actually posed an even greater challenge than old Father Boo himself. The final room in the mansion belongs to Vincent Van Gogh, a ghost who seemingly paints other ghosts and brings them to life. It's basically a mini-boss fight of fighting multiple hordes of ghosts, which really isn't all that difficult. I mean, you either catch all three at once or use an element, right? Surely it's not that hard. <laughs> Yeah. Funny enough, I did end up messing up three more times to his silly little hordes of ghosts. Once because I'm an idiot, the second time because I'm an idiot, and the final time... Okay, that one was not my fault. But after carefully taking down each horde and not slipping on any banana peels, I got another shot at catching a ghost who should have not caused me any issues whatsoever. This time, luckily, I kicked his ass back to the 19th century and caught myself the final boo that I needed before being able to take down the final boss of the game and finally finishing this challenge once and for all. I went down to the basement to find the old king waiting for me. I was hoping that maybe I could beat him first try with no damage, as I had been able to do it for almost all the bosses previously. I didn't get my hopes up, but I had always considered this handsome devil to be easier than most of the other bosses in the game. This was it. The final showdown. Oh, he's gonna jump. That's cool. We're gonna jump today, huh? Is that, is that, was I too far for your taste? Okay. Well, then I can move in that time. Okay, not bad. Okay. Dude, the range on his fire is so stupid, actually. Okay. Is he gonna go upside down? I don't remember. No, not yet? Damn, really? You know what, I'm playing like, I'm playing for survivability here, unironically. I'm not playing, I mean, I'm playing to win, obviously, I missed. That almost ran into me, not gonna lie. Okay, we got him. I can't stand too close, because he'll f me over. What the asshole he is. Because I'm standing really far away from King Boo. Okay. Okay. Ooh, he turned around quickly there. Holy shit, that was a buddy. Okay. No way. There is no way. First try, baby. And just like that, not only had I finally beaten this stupid challenge, but I'd beaten it without taking a single point of damage against the final boss. I don't know how I did it, but damn it, did I feel great. Even if I had cheesed the entire run, I still managed to prove that I could sort of beat the entire game damageless. But this does beg the question, would I be able to come back to this challenge and truly beat the entire game in one whole run without taking any damage? I don't know, and I don't want to find out, because I don't want to do this ever again.